the comments, let's, guys. Yes, let's know in the comments. Should Matt be allowed to keep his Paladarium? <laughs> and for goodness sake, if you do keep it, I drill let's it. Let's get it drilled. We'll get drill the back. Awful equipment. <laughs> <laughs>
And, and these are built by yourselves? And the classics, yep. Yeah. Yep, so we built these. Nice. So acrylic is stronger, clearer and lighter. Um, the only disadvantage is it scratches more easily, I guess? It's easier. You can buff it out though. Okay. Um, so again, if you do get a scratch inside or outside, it can be uh, buffed out. Yeah. Um, from a health and safety point of view, in a, a care home or any public environment, a tank should ideally be tough and laminate. Um, okay. By the time you look at the pricing on that. Just because of the insur for insurance, public liability. Insur exactly, yeah, yeah, public liability. Obviously, if float glass was to break in a public place. Yeah. Um, Fish look great. We had real dramas. When we first got here, I got high over my big camera, you can see in the background, and the fish were just hiding amongst the vallis, and they wouldn't come out. And we tried all sorts of tricks, tried feeding them, tried encouraging them to come out, and they were just stubborn. But now, they're, they're coming out nicely. So, But yeah, the reason I'm here is to um, just get some promotional shots for Matt, Matt and his business, basically. So. <laughs> kind of little chapter of today seeing Matt's install in this care home uh, next are we going to go to Crowder's next yeah I've got Crowder's, Crowder's yeah. next They're about 15 minutes away from here so that's cool and uh, see how well they've been looking after the tank I escaped at my workshop yeah and I think Piotr's is there as well isn't it yes yeah I think they're both looking quite good oh, God, look at them now look at the way they're grouping now <laughs> beautiful Okay, so here I am at Crowder's Aquatics. I was here a few months ago, uh, did an aquascaping workshop, and let's go and check out the scape. I'm really excited. I'm hoping it's looking good. So Crowder's is a small kind of independent family-run aquatic shop. Really nice guys, super hardworking, and we've actually got the lights turned off in here so we can get a better, better view of the scape without reflections. So there's Rocky and his wife Kaz in the background. And this is the tank I did. I can't remember the actual size. Is it 90 centimetres yeah. by 50 by 50? Oh, 90 by 60 by 50. 90 by 60 by 50. It is looking great, isn't it? And apparently these ruby barbs have been breeding, which is always a good sign. I did see the, a baby down here somewhere. Oh yeah, looking great. Really nice. And we've got the Got some philodendron, some pothos growing out the top there. This is the hygrophila coriambosa growing out as well. Adds a real kind of natural sense to the scape. The hygrophila pinnatifida looking great as an epiphyte plant. I really love this kind of jungle, chaotic almost style. It's a perfect home for these ruby barbs. And the guys were just telling me that they they do sell the ruby barbs in store and they weren't selling any at all and then once they were in the display tank everyone wants to buy them so a real good example of why a, a display tank is a great idea for any store we've got a little near right snail here so the crypt parva is super tiny apparently the ruby barbs are kind of picking at this We've got some different crypts in the mid-ground, some rotala stem plant there, a load of bucophalandra, but real natural kind of style, just basically one giant piece of wood, super simple hardscape layout, a couple of pieces of mini landscape rock, looking really great. Uh, equipment wise are running two a Wazay Biomaster 600, so really, really good circulation. Got uh, inline CO2, daily fertilizers. Uh, the light is the Max Light, which I've seen at Aquarium Gardens as well. It's quite an expensive unit. I think it was about 800 pounds retail, but a good light. Very similar in, in terms of the color rendition to the Solar RGB. 
some more stem plants in the background there. Looking really healthy. Actually, zero nuisance algae. Great crypt growth. I just love the kind of colours in this. They're really warm. Remind me of autumn, actually. And the, the complex textures just work really well. Perfect home to these barbs. A great choice of fish, I think, in here. Really nice. I think the aspect ratio, so the the height to width ratio of the fish really suits the, the size of the tank as well. Okay, let's move over to the scape from Piotta. This was done on the same day actually, and this is growing in really well. The dragon stain kind of diorama style. So if you put them together, you can see complete contrast in styles. I think this is a really good good way to represent you know the different styles of aquascaping that you can achieve. Uh, got the twin star lighting on there again it's got pressurized ce2 got an aqua one filter and uh, some looks like the endless in here the tiny little live bearers those are cherry shrimps really nice so let me know guys what do you prefer out of these two scapes that's really great to see an update you know, I do so many workshops and I actually not very often get to see the kind of result after a few months of growth so it's really nice to see this in the flesh really great to see the guys here at Crowders what what is this <laughs> uh hi everyone so we've just got back from Crowders we're just about to go into Matt's place Matt's got a couple of tanks a uh, reef tank as uh, the reef tank and a paludarium yeah. and I think the uh, you've, you've built them both yourself, right? Yep, yeah, both tanks are acrylic. Uh, yeah, yeah. By ourselves. So we'll talk about those in more detail when we go in. Um, but I just wanted to show you guys this, because, Matt, why why have you got this in your van? This is to drive an awful lot with the kids, and they ah. fall asleep, so they've got neck pillows. There we go. <laughs> There's a genuinely good reason for it. You're not just a bit weird. Van naps. Yeah, yeah. okay. <laughs> okay, so let's go and take a look at these tanks. I'm excited. Okay, so here we are in Matt's lovely home looking at his reef tank very I'm gonna say the first thing that strikes me is the shape so what made you decide to go for this on the shape um so it was something different really the main reason this actually came around um do you remember we did the mortuary tank uh, a good few months ago oh yeah yeah that tank actually came in here for a day before the install and uh, Nina and I have a half saw it and, and liked it you really liked it yeah so that of this really is, it's obviously a a functioning fish tank good for the you know the animals but it's a piece of furniture yeah it's not just a fish tank it's quite modern isn't it quite yeah yeah i really like it it's just different it exactly. looks like a modern home definitely yeah and um people are thinking why the hell have you got a massive air stove in the <laughs> right here it's really ugly <laughs> yeah so that is um connected to the red box down there um okay. which is quietly beeping away at the moment so that's a ups uh, uninterrupted power supply okay. basically about your backup so with obviously the storm we've got at the moment and the very bad weather, there's a high potential for power cuts. Okay. Um, so this is in place. If there is a power cut, we've got some oxygen going on. Okay. Obviously there's a fair few corals in there and you know, the gem tang, etc. that we don't want to lose any fish, but you know, certainly when there's so lots of stock in it, you don't want to lose it. So does that come on automatically in the power cut as well as, or do you have to have it on all the time? So it's, this one is on all the time. Okay. Um, and then if there's a power cut, it flicks okay. over to the battery within like nanoseconds. Wow. And how much battery life? Uh, that runs the um, Awaza air pump for eight hours. Eight hours, wow. That's pretty cool. So we run these on quite a few freshwater tanks um, on customers, again, just for the sort of protection side of it really. So you've got a gem tank here. Yep. And how much is it? I've, I've seen these at up to like two grand. Two oh, so it wasn't 2,000. So this one was around 1,200. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I actually, um, interesting story. I did, um, I used to work for TMC. Yeah. Tropical Marine Centre. And they had, I think, 18 gem tanks in one tank at one point. Nice. Yeah. And I, I took a photo of it. Yeah. Nice. On their social media. Um, I really like the scape. It's quite open. Uh, is it, what kind of rock is it? 
So this is all the Caribbe Sea rock. Is it fake? Or is it uh, it's, it's fake. Well, it's, it's a man-made rock, so it's a man-made alternative. Okay. So where possible, I try to do as, as least impact on the real world as we can. Yeah. So the man-made alternative is great. Um, still very similar sort of biological capabilities once it's mature, etc. Um, so with this, we basically break the rock apart. Um, there's an acrylic base underneath the sand. Right. We then use PVC pipe, glued, and then heat guns to get a general shape. Yeah. And then we glue the rock back on afterwards, um, which gives us sort of stable structures to to put like the coral like section on. I really like the open structure and I'm, I'm guessing that this is good because um, it's open to circulating water. Exactly, yep. So you're going to get good aerobic kind of filtration going on. Yep, less dead uh, spots for detritus build up, etc. as yeah. well. Um, so you've got a pair of clowns in there, common clowns. Yep. Uh, you've got a Bangai Cardinal. Yep. So are, they, are these, um, I, I guess the gem tang's obviously wild caught, but is the, is the Bangai Cardinal? The Bangai be tank, tank bred. Yeah. Yep. The, the clownfish captive bred. Yeah. Uh, the yellow wrasse is quite likely to be um, wild, wild caught still. Because okay. I'm, as you know, I'm probably going to be setting up a reef tank soon and I'm quite keen to stock as much captive bred as I can. Yeah, definitely. So um, we won't go into each coral in detail, but you've got like a, mi a mixture of softies and, and uh, SPS. Yep, and LPS. Yeah, a bit of everything yeah, in there really. And. I am, you know, super interested in corals. We'll maybe do another video another time, but it's nice to see a mixture of corals. Do you find a challenge to to keep mixed corals because they have different demands, or is there, have you come up with a kind of system that works? Um, you know, massively. It, it's simple enough. Um, on this, it's obviously only a small tank. Um, as far as flow, we've made sure that any SPS we do have are fairly undemanding. Yeah. So it's um, like Montipora, the Platin, and then the Montipora uh, Digitata, I think my pronunciation is correct. Yeah. Um, the Digis, again, it's a very easy SPS. Um, well, the clown's taking up post in there, that's cool. Yeah. Beautiful. Uh, lighting AI primes? Yep, two AI primes. This is sexy, isn't it, the covers that you've got? Yeah, so again, that's made by ourselves um, as a, obviously, to stop fish jumping out. Yeah. But I've yeah. got four cats, um, <laughs> one of them weighing about six and a half kilos. So this here can take a cat's weight quite wow. comfortably, really just in case. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's take a look at the filtration, because this is really interesting to me, because you're kind of, mi you're kind of mixing up old school with new school methodologies I'd say so we've got two external filters yep which aren't really used a lot in most reef aquariums no no and you've got normal you've got regular kind of media in there biological and mechanical media yep, yep. normal biomedia sponges um obviously ceramics and then we run um carbon phosphate mover and floss as well okay and how often do you clean those out every couple of months Ish. Serious? Yeah, so not nitrate build up. Nah, no, not too much cool. at all. And then this is the clever stuff. So you've got four dosing pumps there with four solutions. What's this all yep. about? Yep, so this is the Triton other methods. Um, so obviously, the normal Triton has a fertilizer in there to help grow the Cheeto. Um, yeah. Obviously, on this, where we don't have a refugium, we run other methods. Okay. So they're spitting all the nutrients extra we need in. Wow. So. Um, if and when I get my Triton system, we will go into a lot more detail about that. So that's just a little bit of a preview to you guys. But basically, this means that we can grow corals very well. Um, are you changing any water? Um, so on this one, I still am. I've only just had Triton running for about two weeks now. Um, so on this tank is relative, new, yeah, know, relatively okay. new on this tank. Um, Do you think you will change? Because it's quite a small volume, isn't it? it I still will on this. Uh, yeah. The main benefit of the the regular triton system is that the algae is taking out your nutrient, nutrient export, export. Yeah. obviously on this where i don't have it so whilst we run the phosphate removers in the uh canister filters i probably still carry in water changes um but after a few weeks you know we obviously do our water tests and we'll adjust it as needed yeah so i think it's just a really interesting system that you've got here uh, a lot of people will kind of maybe comment on having a tang in such a small tank. Is there anything you want to say to address those comments? Yeah, it's, it's one that it's definitely a bit of a taboo. Um, obviously, as you know, we own, or I own, a installation and maintenance company. We've got customers all over the area um, with tanks 
an awful lot bigger than this. Yeah. Um, as soon as you start to outgrow it, we'll rehouse it into one of our other customers. Okay, so it isn't a long-term It's not a long-term one. It's a fish that I've been after for a very long time. Yeah. So we got a small one. Again, so give us six months. Yeah. We've got two or three of our regular customers who are always interested in them. Um, and it'll move on to one of them when it has to. Yeah, nice. I really like it. I love a lovely scape. And I love, I love the way that you've, you've, in, you've used the shape of the, you know, this of kind the of, tank. I don't know what the shape you call it. There must be a proper name for this kind of shape. Yeah, I don't like know. a vase, isn't it? Yep. And you've accentuated that with the hardscape. I think yeah. that works really well. I think it's a great job. Now. Yeah. Yeah. Again, made this yourself from acrylic. Yep. So this was, uh, yeah, a ten mil acrylic. This one. Um, it's. Do you, so when you're making it, then you you got a, you, your friend, isn't it, Dan? He's got a workshop, is it? That's it. Yeah. Yeah. And you buy in the acrylic in huge sheets and. So yeah, we get the acrylic in uh, normally half sheets, so a two meter by meter and a half sheet. Obviously, if the job's bigger, then we get full sheets in, okay. um, and then obviously. Can I just convert that there? to Imperial? So two meters is six feet. Six and a half six, foot seven, seven by five meter. foot. Yeah, uh, by ten mil. And uh, talk about the differences between acrylic and glass. Um, so acrylic is uh, clearer, stronger, and lighter, basically. Um, I think it's about ninety-two percent um, clearer than glass. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Um, and disadvantages? Uh, it scratches easier. Okay. Um, again, but you can counter out that quite quickly with, you can buff it out. Yeah. Um, so if you spend a few hours, you can get any acrylic tank back to brand new. Okay. Well, it's a lovely scape. And you're using the Dragonstone here, which you glued yep. together, individual pieces? That's it, so this is Dragon Rock. So there's around 35 kilos. I think, okay. that's work backwards from what I had left from my boxes. Um, and it's basically all yeah, broken up, washed down and, and scrubbed out, obviously, yeah. dried up and then glued together. That's really cool. And um, plant wise, you've got Fitonia, some Acarus, Duca Valandra. Yep. Awesome. And uh, how long has this been running? It looks like it's only been set up recently. Yes, I think it's like two, two weeks or so. It's like um, it's actually set up for the um, EAPLC 2020. Oh, um, section. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. it. So unfortunately, this tank is a, a short-lived one. So um, you just literally set up for a contest? Set up for the contest. And then you strip it down again. Yeah. Um, it, it's not what I usually do, but unfortunately, I'm not allowed two tanks in the house. So, yeah. so you just fancy the challenge? And, and I've wanted to do... I had this actual tank built about six months ago. We built one for a customer. Oh, right. And I got excited by his designs. Yeah. So I built two. Oh, and wow. I said, well, actually, I'll set one up at the same time this customer was. His was just a supply only. He did the rest of it himself. Yeah. And um, yeah, the, the competition basically gave me a, a kick up the backside to, to actually do what I've been planning on doing for quite a while. Yeah. It's just a I shame. I think that's a really good point, actually. Um, contests are really a good way to focus you know, your intention. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's all, you know, great that you've got a hobby, but if you actually want a, an end goal, if you've got a vision in mind and you want to execute it to the best of your ability, then a contest is a really good way, yeah. I think, to kind of give you that motivation. It's motivation to do like, it. If you like a specific uh, goal and a target to aim for on a certain date, yeah. I think this is a really good motivating thing. So any, any viewers out there, you know, I would encourage you to maybe try to enter a contest to give you perhaps some some extra motivation um let's talk about the ugly filter pipes at the front of the tank why are they there um because the tank's only be running for two weeks 
Okay. So it and was we, premature media we put in. Okay. Um, usually if this was on a actual install, yeah. we would have drilled the cabinet and drilled the tank. Okay. So, yes, um, so the pipe work never done. Because be I know it's temporary. We weren't going to drill it. Um, again, after this is done, it's um, all going to be taken apart and get used again. If it obviously had holes in, it might limit future possibilities. Yeah. Really lovely detail work. Thank you. And you've got ember touches in there? Yep. Yeah, really nice. Ten of them yeah. working around. Great. And what's the volume of water here in total? Uh, it's about 50 litres. So about 15, 12, 12 US gallons? Yeah. yeah. And you've got this fogging machine here on the right? Yep, so that's a Zoomed, um, one of their foggers. Yeah, shout out to Cyril if he's watching. <laughs> <laughs> and again, you've got the AI Prime lighting. AI Prime. I do like these. I've never actually I, used one myself. As you can see today, we've Use them on all of our installs. Yeah, and then again, another... Um, We've got a, quite a small profile, but quite powerful. Yeah. yeah. Again, another Senai run on it. Oh, yeah. So, so yeah, let's on, talk about the Senais, because you, you like these, don't you? And what, again, what? almost all of our installs have a Senai on. Um, and tell people that don't know what these are, what, are they, what do they do? So a Senai uh, is a phrase in the aquarium monitor. So this measures your temperature, free ammonia, and your pH. Okay. Um, also tells you about any power cuts if you get them, or yeah, okay. loss of connectivity, and, um, and leak level. detection. Uh, water level, if it goes out of water. Um, leak, and you can get a leak detector as well to go onto the um, SWS, the Seno web server. Wow. So if it's in the cabinet, for example, it can tell if something's leaking. Again, you're going to get an alert about it. Awesome. I really like this, mate. It's a shame you're not allowed to keep it in the long term. I know. Maybe if your missus watches this video, we could everyone can convince her in the comments that you should be allowed to keep it yeah let, let us know in the comments let's, guys yeah, let's know in the comments should Matt be allowed to keep his paladarium <laughs> and for goodness sake if you do keep it I'll drill let's it let's get it drilled and we'll get drill the back awful equipment <laughs> <laughs>
checked payable to George yeah. <laughs> from a studio. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, I'll end it there, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Really appreciate it. Thanks again to Matt. Check out Matt. He's on Instagram, Facebook. You've got a website. Links in the description. Yeah. Um, in all seriousness, if you are in the, in the market for a beautiful custom-built acrylic aquarium, get in touch. Here's the map. Okay. Cool. Thanks. You're welcome. You take care. Keep on skating. Cheerio. Awesome. Cool.